Well, it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Mutu Tony from the Marist Club yes. in, uh, in Auckland, and of course uh, a great Kiwi. I'd like to start, Mutu, if mm. I may, if you can tell us about the early days, especially at um, Marist and starting out as a young fellow at the yep. famous club. No, it was good, real good actually. Um, you know, when you go to Marist, it was uh, Ross Lipscomb, you know, who was a great uh, club man, not only in Auckland, but in the game in general. So we were quite fortunate that Ross was the chairman of the club at the time and his son Anthony was our coach. Yes, yes. So I guess I was lucky that I had the Lipscomb family sort of guide our team, you know, the whole time I was at Maris. So we started in um, 1988, our team came together and we formally disbanded in 1999. That was the furthest that we could go as far as we could as a team. Same coach? Same coach, um, same core group of players. Yeah. So we'd been together what's that, 11 years, and then we were all, after under 18s, um, you know, we had won the championship at Carlo Park, you know, one of my wow. favourite venues ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we were fortunate, I think we won maybe three finals at Carlo Park, you know, our team at Marist. Wow. And then uh, year 2000, uh, the barter card came in, and that's where yeah. I stuck with Marist, and Marist had joined with Richmond, so yes. it was Marist-Richmond. Yeah. But very lucky to be, um, you know, to be at Marist at, the, at a time when the Lipscomb family were there. Some great players, of course, come out of this. Sonny Bill Williams, of course. Uh, yes. Francis Malley, just to name a couple. 100 yep. years this year. Players that you admired when you mm -hmm. were coming through the system. Right? Yeah, definitely. A lot of the players that I admired um, are probably unlucky with timing. You know, there was like uh, Willie Swan. Um, there's Julian O'Neill. Those sort of players who uh, they sort of played professionally, but more so in the UK. Uh, and I was just lucky, um, you know, like Vincent Wolf's another one, John Wangafa. So just very lucky that um, I was playing at Maris at the time and the Warriors sort of came in while I was still sort of like a young fella. De La Salle? De La Salle, yes. Rugby school, but you played league, you played league there? Yes, How yes. How did you find that? I, um, De La Salle, very good school. I, um, I was quite lucky again that uh, when I was at De La Salle there were a lot of junior Warriors that were there at the time. Uh, we had um, sort of like Leslie Vainicolo who was in our team. Um, we had Mark Liafo, who was a junior warrior and played in RL, and um, Mataitai Savia, who unfortunately you know, passed away um, back home while uh, on holiday, um, pre-season holiday from West Tigers at the time, and he, um, he was our captain uh, for our school league team, and he's probably you know, one of the best players I've played with, even though he didn't get a chance to play in RL. Influences on your early career, Mutu, you know, from not from a playing perspective, but uh, coaching your mum, your dad, your, yes. your, your, your siblings or cousins, uh, yep. much of an influence on you playing rugby league? Yeah, yeah, no, it did. I sort of, you know, um, another name I forgot to mention from Maris was, you know, Willie Poaching. Of know, course, of course. Yeah, yeah. back in that day, um, you know, you wanted to play for your top side or your, your fox side if they were in the fox. But, um, you know, I had a lot of influences, the, the Lipscomb family, obviously, for all the work they had done, not only in our team, for, for the Maris Club. Yep. Uh, my parents and um, my grandpa. Yes, my grandpa mm -hmm. was, uh, he used to take me to uh, Vine Street Park in Mangere. Oh, look at make Vine me, Street. Yes, yep. make me run around that, that field that's there. But, um, you know, I think that's how committed we were to, to the Maris Club, that uh, we moved out to, to Mangere. Um, Pretty much when I started playing at Maris, but we kept going to to Maris because you know of how it's a family club and the team we had together. So you know, over the club and some of the people there a great deal. You um, you made the New Zealand residents team in two thousand. Yes. Were you pretty well much determined to make rugby league a career prior to that, or was that the turning point for you when you made that touring team? No, I. Uh, it's probably not a strategy that I recommend for everybody, <laughs> but I knew when the Warriors came into um, the NRL or the Winfield Cup at the time in 1995, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember my last year of high school in 1999, uh, one of my teachers at school thought I was throwing my life away because I was a, <laughs> I was a, a talented student, she thought, yeah. and uh, she asked me what I wanted to do and I said I wanted to play for the Warriors and I told her that you know, I could always go to university, but I've only got one chance to make the Warriors, and yeah, that's yeah. why I, I told her that after I've played for the Warriors in professional rugby league, yeah. I'll go to university, and uh, quite fortunate I did that. And did. Um, I saw the teacher that 
challenged me on that and I reminded her quite nicely and she yeah. just laughed and called me a smart ass. Yeah. <laughs> so so fifty five games for the for the Warriors. Yep. Um a good time for you to play as you remember uh, coaching and Yeah, great time. Yeah, real great time. It was um everything just came together really. I uh you probably take it for granted because you're you're a young kid and things happen quite quick. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was the same for for the Warriors at the time. You know when um, the Warriors had, I think they were in administration at the time, and yes, yes. Eric Watson bought the club, and they were looking for players. And uh, you know I had just finished playing for the Junior Kiwis, so the story is um, that uh, the Warriors sort of hierarchy came to watch the Junior Kiwis, Junior Kangaroos game that I was playing in, and they came to watch the person I was marking up against. Oh. But uh, I ended up sort of getting mad at the match of that game, and they gave me an opportunity. So timing is everything, and quite lucky. So, so some of the players that, that really stood out for you and that uh, when you made your debut for the Warriors? Uh, Kevin Campion. Yes, absolutely. yes, yes. Um, and just to have the opportunity to play with Stacey Jones, you yeah. know, yeah. the little general. Um, you know, all of them were people that I looked up to. You know, I'm a Warriors fan um, since they came into the comp. So for me, it was, you know, yeah. training with these guys after idolising and seeing them on TV was just surreal. So they prob they probably got sick of me after a while. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the 2002 grand final. That must have just been amazing. Tell, tell me about the, the final series, the week mm. leading into the grand final and the grand final. Yeah. So the uh, the 02 grand final was just uh, the week of the grand final just went, you know, yeah. just so fast. You know, I remember us, um, you know, having having to beat Cronulla in the major semi. And, uh, you know, we were being ridden off and, um, you know, sort of a, queried about our inexperience at that sort of level. But we just had a, a well-balanced team. Uh, we were well coached by Daniel Anderson. Um, and it just came together nicely. You know, the only sort of um, issue for us is that we came up against a very, um, you know, talented and experienced rooster side who had lost the, the grand final two years earlier to the Broncos. So, um, you know, we came up against a better side, but it was just a great experience to be there. And I remember coming coming back to Auckland after we had beaten the Sharks in a major semi. And uh, I saw all these people outside, you know, the airport terminal, and I didn't know they were there for us, yeah, but yeah. they were. You know, it was just crazy. Yeah, yeah. So then we, then we go to 2001, of course, we'll go back to 2001 when you made your Kiwi debut. Mm -hmm. How special was that for you, for the boy from Maris wearing that black and white jersey? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's one of those... Um, you know, when you're on the field and that, you know, you um, you share, you know, you share the moments with your teammates that are on the field, but you don't really get an opportunity to share moments with your family when it comes to rugby because you know they're not on the field physically. But I remember um, 2001, uh, the Kiwis uh, didn't tell players who were selected, so you had to watch Sky on a night. Um, there was a TV program that was scheduled. Yes. And you had to watch it to see if you had made the Kiwis or not. Yes. And uh, I remember, you know, being sat in the living room uh, with my parents and my younger brothers. And um, you know, the first name they read was my name because I was playing fullback. Yeah. And they mentioned, you know, they said Motu Tony Maris. And uh, you know, it was just sort of, yeah, it's one of those moments I can't put yeah. into words. You know, it's, yeah. it makes me, you know, sort of lump yeah, in yeah, the throat yeah, type yeah. moment. Well, you're getting me going too. You're getting me going too. So, tell me about uh, that first and sitting in the changing room and you. You're looking around the change room, and those players that are in there with you, who, who's in there with you, and that, that feeling sitting in there? Yeah, well, um, I had no time to sort of acclimatise to the you know the Kiwis environment because I sort of had a look at the rooming list, and uh, I was rooming with Stephen Kearney, so uh, straight away. Sorry about that. Yeah, so, <laughs> but it was, um, you know, for me it was just you know the whole week and just a chance to um, you know be in Steve's company. Um, you know, it was just an amazing experience and just seeing the level of professionalism. And then we had guys like, uh, you know, obviously Stacey, you know, Nigel as well. So uh, Nigel Bangna, who's, you know, obviously a work colleague, but also a great Kiwi. So it was just, you know, you, you go up watching these guys and then all of a sudden they're your Kiwi teammates. It was just so awesome. And, um, you know, one of the things that you always cherish is playing for the Kiwis. Yeah. So 13 tests for the Kiwis. Yep. 2005 Tri Nations winner. That was an absolutely special occasion. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you you win in there, complete underdogs, but to win yeah. and win how you did must have been very special. Yeah, it was. It was just, um, you know, uh, Brian McLennan had done a, a great job bringing, you know, the sort of like the team together, and it was just 
I think, um, you know, that was sort of like my fourth year in the Kiwis. And you sort of just get sick of just turning up and playing the test. You know, we felt, you know, there's a time, you know, and that time had sort of come and, you know, Stacey, uh, Ruben, Nigel, you know, they were sort of like the senior Kiwis. And uh, I remember coming in and, you know, I'm still, you know, a young, young Kiwi at, at that stage. Um, and they sort of put the pressure on us to contribute and to speak and to lead the team, which was different because, you know, as a young uh, player or young Kiwi, you just get told what to do and you do it. But this time, you know, they were asking us to lead and contribute and um, it sort of made us accountable and, and felt like we own, own that team ourselves. And, you know, I guess the rest speaks for itself because, you know, in the final, um, we just kept, lo oh, I kept looking up at the clock because I was like, they're going to come back here. Yeah, the Aussies yeah. always come back. And it wasn't until, say, you know, 79th minute, I was like, there's no coming back from this. Yeah. You know? But, you know, the party was pretty good after. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. So, so, so tell me about the moments you shared with some of your teammates after that one. Um, I remember um, Ruben and I just having a few, um, you know, kava lattes yeah. and, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, um, you know, just a special, you know, special night, you know, to share it with guys. And I think we didn't, um, because we were in the UK, uh, we didn't appreciate the, the magnitude of what we had achieved. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, we, we celebrated it, but, um, you know, looking back upon reflection, you know, we should have celebrated even more because yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you know, the um, all the history and just that moment sort of, I feel, set up uh, the following Kiwi teams that won, you know, the 2008 World Cup and the Four Nations in 2010. So, um, you know, that sort of started all that process and it made it, um, I guess, visible and maybe changed the mindset in some of our players that, geez, the Aussies can be beaten yes. in a big game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Then, of course, um, Hull, Wakefield, Trin Trinity, Castleford, yes. Whitehaven. So, so how did that come about? I mean, that was a pretty big move for yep. Motu Tony. I always wanted to go to the UK. Yeah, yeah the UK was um, an experience I always wanted to experience um, and taste because uh, I grew up watching, you know, the Challenge Cup finals where the Kiwis were yeah. playing, you know, the, and the Great Wigan teams. So yeah. that was always on our TV, probably more, uh, more so than the NR or the Winfield Cup at that stage. Challenge Cups was on TV yeah. before, so I grew up watching, you know, that um, the English game, and I always wanted to go there. Um, so I had a chance to go there in 2004, and I uh, went there and had a blast. It was a great time. It was nice to see a bit of the world, but also play professional rugby league, yeah, yeah. and just, um, you know, just the time where you know my wife and I could uh, experience a different part of the world and, and grow up. And no, we had a great time. Yeah, we had a great time in the UK. 2005 Challenge Cup? Yeah, 2005 Challenge Cup. So, that again, um, because that was sort of, you know, early stages in the UK, you don't appreciate what you've yeah. achieved. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the 2016 and 2017 Challenge Cups that Hull FC won and I was the GM of football, yes, yes. I really enjoyed that because I learnt from 2005. Yeah. And when we won in 2005 the Challenge Cup, uh, I went upstairs and I said, I'm just going to have a little nap because I was so tired from the game. And I ended up sleeping the whole night, you oh. know, so that's probably the worst celebration ever. <laughs> so I made sure that um, 2016 and 2017, I was the last one to go to sleep. Yeah. Well, what, about, what about the whole players that, that mm -hmm. you, you shared some experience as well? Yeah, see, um, when I went to Hull, it was always, you know, um, James Luluai, Gary yes, Kimball, yeah, yeah. Dan O'Hara, you know, that was yeah. the benchmark for any Kiwi. Yeah. So uh, I knew I had to sort of, you know, get up to that standard, but also try and take it above because those guys were legends and they'd opened the door for us Kiwis yeah. to go to Hull and, and do well. So um, I was quite fortunate that James came, James came over, James Luluai came over, um, I think it was 2016, early in the year. And then later on that year, we won the Challenge Cup. So when we won the Challenge Cup, he sent me a text to say how proud he was because wow. we had never won the Challenge Cup at Wembley in over 100 years of trying. So when he got that text, I knew, um, I think I've made it to you know that level now. I've been accepted by yeah. the le Kiwi legends of Hull. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very special. Tried a bit of rugby? Yeah, tried a bit of rugby. I, um, Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> because it's an easier game to play. <laughs> But no, I um, I was coming back off a serious injury and um, 
at the time I didn't have a, a club. I was um, I was off contract and I got sort of seriously ill. So I went and uh, played for the local rugby club that um, sort of gave me some you know time. It gave me like a team environment that I didn't have. I had some fun, some real good fun. And uh, those rugby boys, uh, they're a crazy lot, but uh, they're not as special as the league, the league boys. So you, you mentioned briefly before what's about uh, the administration side of your career. Yep. And that began in England, of course. What, what made you decide that you thought, yep, um, I want to try the administration? Because you, you, you went and got your degree and yep. looked at all that. So how did that come about? I, uh, I'm a big American sports fan. Um, and I've always been um, an American sports fan. And um, one thing I sort of knew quite early was that uh, I couldn't play forever. And I hated coaching. You know, I don't like coaching. Because uh, when I was in the UK, I saw the coaches outside in winter. I thought, no chance, I'm going to do that. So, and I knew that a way I could stay in the game uh, and contribute at a high level was in the management side. Yep. So, um, I sort of studied uh, on and off while I was playing. But uh, when I graduated with my um, degree in communication, a Bachelor of Arts in communication, I said, uh, you know, that's me, I'm done. You know, I can sort of retire knowing that uh, mentally I had gotten a degree, uh, degree while I was playing. And then uh, I just had an opportunity to do uh, an MBA um, when I was in the UK. And, you know, the plan was to return back to New Zealand after I completed my MBA, but um, I got offered the GM a football job at Hull FC halfway through my, my MBA, so I was studying full-time and working full-time. And, uh, you know, it was real tough, you know, really tough. But, uh, you know, I managed to get through that, and uh, it was, you know, a great time. I learned so much about myself, and, you know, the league, the league career, everything I learned in my league career helped me get through the university because, you know, you have to be tough, you have to be resilient, you know, you have to be um, upbeat in sort of negative times and that's what helped me get through the, the studying and working full time. So you returned to New Zealand of course with the family, CEO of Baseball New Zealand. Yes. So that's a wee bit uh, diverse. Yeah, no I, um, you know when the family and I decided to come back uh, I didn't have any sort of role to come back to and you know I was fine with that. You know I've always sort of been a risk taker and confident in my ability so you know when I brought the family back and uh, just had an opportunity to be an interim CEO for Baseball New Zealand and uh, I think it's a great sport um, you know these American sports they they're just a different sort of context and uh, different environment they're working in but it's just a great sort of pathway sport you know in terms of education performing at a high level and uh, it's non-contact too so anything you could stay away from contact is a good thing yeah and, and tough establishing that sport in New Zealand too. yes yes it is um, and it sort of allowed me to um, meet people from, you know, from New Zealand that uh, were outside of rugby league and opened me up to a whole different sort of set of networks. Mm. So, of course, we have a, a short stint uh, as a director on the yep. board in uh, New Zealand Rugby League. Even though you were there for a short time, how did you like sitting at the table, at the, head of the, at the table of the, the board? Yeah, no, I it was a uh, a learning experience for me, and I, I enjoyed it. And while I was sitting on the board, you know, it was just. Uh, I like to do things and um, I, f I felt that my experiences in the UK but also in rugby league could help, you know, so I felt that uh, while I was contributing on the board, I couldn't really get my hands dirty and actually undertake some of the work. Yeah. So when the role um, of GM of high performance came up, uh, you know, I was sort of asked whether I'd consider it and at first I wasn't too keen but the more I looked into it, uh, the more I felt that I could make a difference in the space and you know that's what we're working towards at the moment. So, so I was just going to ask you about that too, What's it, I mean it is a tough role, mm -hmm. uh, high performance general manager, uh, exciting times for New Zealand Rugby League though. Yes, it is, it is a tough role um, but you know sp any sport um, administration role is tough but it's not as tough as pre-season so that's what I always think about you know when the roles are tough but um, I sort of said, said it quite early to um, you know some of the uh, the players and the staff that we had that came together, uh, I think it was the New Zealand Secondary Schools Tournament, was around when I first came on board. I said, look, if I try and explain my job, it's pretty much um, what I've done, and not so much about me as the person, but the journey I've had. Mm -hmm. You know, I've gone from Marist, you know, to playing for Marist Richmond, to playing for the Warriors, you know, and then a professional career and the Kiwis. And, um, you know, I've managed to get an education and still stay in the game. And that's what we're hoping 
you know, um, the young people that play our game, both male and female, that's the journey that we hope they take. You know, they might not play professionally, but we hope that they can stay in the game and, and contribute. A lot, a lot of rebuilding to be done, do you think, in the game? Yeah, there's some rebuilding to be done, but also there's some great uh, pieces that are really there. You know, we've just got to um, harness those pieces, but also um, utilise some of the resources in our game. There's some great people um, in our game, uh, some great sort of experiences and knowledge too that we need to tap into. And I, I see that as being part of my job is to bring those people together because, you know, rugby league goes without saying how great a game it is. And um, it's given me, you know, given me so much and I'd like to see the game do that for somebody else also. Some significant changes from Maris right through to now to being the general manager of high performance. Mm -hmm. uh, changes, you think, for the good or the better of the game? Um, I think time will tell. You know, I think, uh, you know, I... Uh, when I started playing at Marist, you know, they had, um, you know, they didn't have social media, you know, they didn't have the internet, you know, so it's a totally different time. But, uh, you know, I think we just need to sort of meet the needs of the young people now because they're the ones that will keep playing our game going forward, but also they're the ones that will benefit from our game. So it's trying to find how we can meet those needs, but also serve the needs of these young people that are, you know, available to play our great game. If there's anything that you could change mm -hmm. the way that Mutu Tani wanted to see the game played, yeah. what would it be? What would it be? It would be that uh, in 2003, uh, we lost to Penrith in the major semi-final. Mm -hmm. And I felt that that was the year the Warriors um, could have won the, the grand final, more so than 2002. Because I felt that the, the Roosters, you know, they were quite strong. Uh, but in 2003, it was more even. The only issue we had is that we had, you know, the great Stacey Jones, um, not quite 100 percent. He had an injury. We had Brent Webb, not quite 100 percent, because he was carrying an injury. So that's the the one thing that I, when I think about my career, I'm like, we could have won a premiership that year. But hey ho, you know, I wouldn't change anything for the world. You know, I had a great time, and the game has blessed me and my family so much. So, you know, I'm grateful to the game. So just to finish off, um, what's, if I could ask you over your entire career, mm -hmm. if there was someone that just stood out, maybe a couple of people that stood out that's influenced you and guided you and mentored you mm -hmm. through your career, who, who would you who would you say? Uh, my dad. Yes, my dad. Um, yeah, my dad. He's uh, you know he's he's a humble man, and he sort of showed me what um, just what hard work is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, I don't really want to keep talking because it will make me cry, yeah, yeah. but, um, yeah. you know, he's... Yeah. No, I think you've, you've, made a, you've made your point there. Yes. Mate. Well, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for everything you've done for the game and everything you. that you continue to do for the game. Mm -hmm. It's uh, been our pleasure to have you on uh, New Zealand Rugby League Museum TV. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. me. Thank you.